Guys, more than half of men over 40 experience ED in some form. They're myths about ED. Like, it's just part of getting older. You have to accept it. Guys, that isn't true. This is why I want to tell you about our sponsor, Peter MD. If you think you might be suffering from erectile dysfunction, you can get help from Peter MD today. Guys, the process is simple. You're going to purchase medicine from a variety of oral options, and you're going to complete the medical intake forms that get emailed to you upon purchase. A doctor is going to review the intake forms, then he's going to contact you and see if there's any concerns. If there are no concerns, the medicine is ordered with a U.S. licensed pharmacy, and it's going to get shipped in a discreet, beautiful package right to your door. You're then going to get an option to refill anytime through the custom Peter MD patient portal for a lifetime with one follow-up per year with your provider. Peter MD is growing exponentially, and it has over 3,000 reviews to back their reputability. So help yourself get back on track with your sexual performance and get 15% off any ED product with my code RISEUP at checkout, or just click on the link below. I'm down, guys. I get the blues. I get the post-fight blues. That's an expression I got from Halleck Gracie. Halleck Gracie ran Meta Morris, and he did a great job. He really did. I know the finances get out of control, but, I mean, those things can happen. When you're trying to deliver for the fans and you're saying yes to everything, Halleck's events were awesome. And Halleck played Sunday, and nobody else did. Nobody in any form of combat would go Sunday. And Halleck told me it's because people have the post-fight blues. Saturday night, big pay-per-view, title fight, whatever, whatever it might be. But when that's over, or your energy goes down. So he's going to give them something on Sunday. I'm, just, I'm telling you where I got that expression. So, but I'm feeling it. I was out in Dallas. I go to the Diaz-Paul fight. And there are so many things that happened there. There's so many things that I that, that I observed that guys won't get credit for, but it is incredible to have the focus needed to get everything done, knowing that when everything's done, from getting your team in place and getting into your hotel and getting the travel done all the while. Your coach is great. He wants to get a workout in, not understanding that well, the, then the promotion wants interviews over here and you got to get to this radio station. You got to, all the while, you got to beat the scale the day before, which is for sure the hardest fight of the week. And that's not really seen. Nobody pats you on the back or tells you good job or hands you a check when you win that fight, right? Just, it's just one of these necessary evils and a very rare thing anywhere in the professional world. I believe if anybody ever tried to weigh somebody in before they let them go to work, I believe there would be a class action lawsuit. I believe the ACLU would step up and fund it so fat. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? You have to weigh in before you go to work. And if you don't make the weight, you get fined. Could you imagine? Now, well, but, but you're an athlete, it's different. Is it? Do they, do they weigh in the basketball players? Do they, do they weigh in the football players? Do they weigh in the tennis players? Do they weigh in the golfers? It's a really unique thing. We all get why it's necessary and different. I, I'm not suggesting that for you. I'm just telling you that what an athlete has to go through that really isn't fully observed is incredible. And for Diaz and Paul, it was so relentless and restless. It was a very different situation that Nate Diaz found himself in. I mean, I mean, he's getting pulled in so many directions. And don't forget, this isn't just Nate Diaz. One thing of the Nate Diaz story that hasn't fully been told is the mentorship that he provides to a massive amount of young men. If it wasn't for Nate Diaz, there is a pocket population out there in California that's got a lot of energy, and there's some pretty rough guys that are going to be roaming the streets. So now you have someone that's actually providing a public service of giving them somewhere to come, teaching them a skill, providing them with a goal, and sending them home tired so they aren't roaming those streets. 
And that part of Nate never gets discussed. Coach Nate never gets discussed. So as one of the most loyal guys in the business, he gets an opportunity. He gets asked to be part of a mega event. And the first thing he does is make sure that the organizer of the event understands he wants his guys on the card. So they can all train together, they can travel together, they can cut weight together, they can do this process together. So now when he's in the back trying to be selfish and get himself ready, that's not how Coach Diaz works. Coach Diaz has to now watch each fight in each round and sit on the edge of his seat waiting for the decision to come in with sweaty, I mean, the energy for those kinds of emotions, and then you got to walk out last, which, by the way, was late. I was going to say it was almost it was almost midnight. It was almost midnight East Coast time. We were in Dallas, so they were an hour back. It's a lot. I mean, it really is a lot. And you're going into a sport that you haven't done before. There's just a ton on it. And I say the same things about Jake Paul. By the way, watching these two, Nate and Jake, work. Watching the videos, watching the small things that they did. I mean, I mean, Jake comes in on a tank. Like, that might have looked cool and been a, been a cool shot, but he's still got to do it. On fight night, right? He's trying to get his, his mind right. He's, he's, he's got a million things he's got to deal with, but he's got to stop and get, okay, are the cameras ready? Okay, do we light this thing right? All right, and action in three, two, one, for that tank to roll, for them to have that clip, for him to jump off it. Before we can even go to the locker room to begin the process, I mean, I'm just sharing for you, I can't remember a time that I've ever witnessed where an athlete in a main event, an athlete on the card at all, did promotion the day of the fight. Not only did Jake Paul do it on the day of the fight, he did it at the arena the night of the fight. It just That just doesn't happen. But, but you have these big asks. And Nate's got these same asks. Not to mention all the people coming to town. Not to mention all the people that want to support him. Not to mention all the questions that his guys have. Or, hey, where's this? Where, I mean, he's got to be on his face working the entire time. And it, it just was, it was one of those remarkable things. I mean, those two must be exhausted. And the fight itself for, for Jake and Nate was of the utmost importance. Like everything that I just stated was a necessary evil in their mind to get to the fight, to perform, to do what their coaches worked on, to invoke their strategies, to be able to hold up, to have the energy, the heart, the desire, try to get your hand raised. Uh, I fully understand that. The outcome of that fight was quite possibly the last thing on our minds that were there to watch it and to support the event, the, the outcome. The performance, as far as the grit, the skill, where are things at for both sides, right? Because Jake's got his own path that he's on. And Jake has to show us progression. He has to show us that he's getting better, which is hard for us to believe he can do. Because of, of everything that I just laid out for you that I I saw Jake do, I have had to question, when does he train? When does he prepare? I've wondered that about his brother and him from day one, which now I believe has five years has passed. I think we're at the five-year mark or right towards the end of the four-year mark, which is not very much time. But in addition, the work and the effort and the focus that it takes to have those kinds of skills and it's not just to be able to throw a hand and, and, and all the geometry and calculus involved to make sure that this lands. I mean, it's the ultimate math equation of a train leaves Minneapolis at 4 p.m. traveling at 80 miles an hour, and a train leaves Portland going 110 miles an hour, and they're both going to Anaheim. Like It's, it's, it's the ultimate thing to get this to hit that guy's moving, the guy's moving, then the guy's moving at a different speed, and the guy's moving left, and then he's moving right, and when you throw it out, you got to find him. Oh, by the way, once you find him, this one needs to come right behind him. I mean, there's, there's so many things that go into it. It, it. it is so remarkably difficult to do, but it doesn't look that way on TV. It's like, oh, I could do that. I go, I'm such a guy. And believe me, I had that. I, I had that. 
I went into my first fight. It was an amateur fight. Fought Trevor Prangley. And what was the year? It was 1999, I believe. I guess that wasn't my first fight. But it was, it was one of them. And at that time, there was no such thing as a mixed martial arts gym. Anywhere in the world. There, there was no gym where if you walked in and go, hey, what do we do here? And they'll go, mixed martial arts. Mixed martial arts was a term that was developed to get a law passed through the Nevada State Legislature in 2001. Like, people love to say, we're doing martial arts. It's about honor. It's about power. And it's about respect. Because Hollywood, through movies, told you that that's what martial arts is about. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just sharing with you. That's why you think that. So when you see somebody come out and you see them be a little bit brash and they're breaking the code of martial arts and they're a trash talker, your perception and vision of what mixed martial arts is came from Hollywood. It came nowhere else. Oh, and by the way, the term to even call this martial arts was just done as a soft way to get cage fighting passed through the legislature in Nevada. I mean, I'm just, I'm sharing the history with you, right? So, Jake's got to show a progression, and you will wonder, how would he progress? How would he get better? When would he have time? He's only been at this for, this guy doesn't sleep. This guy gets everything, everything that he needs. It's not going to be the training. It's not going to be getting up and getting those miles in. It's not going to be getting to the gym. It's not going to be working with the coach. It's not going to be focusing on his diet. If Jake Paul is to sacrifice something, it is very clear, it will be sleep. I love that. I love that. You ever meet people who don't have time? You ever meet people who don't have time? Oh, you got the time. Sleep less. Right there. Boom. I just, I just found you two hours. Right there. You like to get eight hours a night? Oh, I need eight hours a night. You're going to get six. Oh, but I need eight. You're going to get six. But now you have the time. Don't ever say you don't have time. Ever. You don't find time. You make time. And I'm just sharing with you to watch everything that hits so we can see it, right? You can't say it with, with everybody. You can't even say it with very many people. You get to see what Jake does all day. He's got a camera on him all day. We know what he's doing. And when something has to give, it's not work. And it's not desire. It's not goals. It's not his dreams. It's not his training. And he's only got one other thing that he can give. He's got one thing that he can dip into. One thing that can get pushed. And it's sleep. So now he's doing all of these things you're seeing him do, and he's doing them tired. It's really quite impressive. And I watched it from Nate's standpoint. And it was one of the first times I believe that Nate was able to have fun. The pressure was very different. And, and Nate Diaz's identity is not that of a boxer. When Nate Diaz comes out and does interviews, you never hear him mention the word boxing. Go watch 20 Nate Diaz interviews and find that word one time. I'm just sharing for you, right? So now he's in a different situation where he gets to have some fun because now the, it's a very different pressure. But the supporters are hoping for a good performance where he can hold up and not look old, which every fighter will do at some point. And none of those things happened. There was grit. There was stamina. There was fighting of the opponent. He was having fun out there. He threw a guillotine on one time. He looked up and laughed to the crowd. I mean, it's one of those things. I could not do that. There were certain things that I could not do. I'd see other guys do it. Like, Gosh, how are you doing that? I could even use that in the practice room. Bell goes five minute rounds. Bell goes off, and you'll have somebody that comes over and wants to have a conversation. Hey, how's everything? Hey, can we blah, blah, blah? Want to have a conversation? It's like, I can't relate to that. I, that, that one minute rest is the only thing I have. That clock going off is the only thing I have to help me survive. And in that one minute, I am not wasting any effort on energy other than having some water and getting ready for the next round, right? Like it's one of these things. So when Nate's out there and he's being playful and he's having fun, he has an energy. He has a, a cardio energy. He has a, a lack of fear. He's not processing and thinking, where am I at? How many times have I been hit? What's the score of this? How much time's left? Those are all very natural deductions that a fighter is doing nonstop. Nate wasn't. He was enjoying himself. And, I mean, it, it was such an honorable thing to do and an incredible risk 
to take by both guys. That when I when I tell you that I'm down, oh man, I'm a little bit down today. That's why it was it was really a a special thing to see. And it was unique the same way that Nate was out there and able to exhale a little bit and just enjoy the moment. I don't usually get that as a fan. But for the first time, I did. And it was great. 